All right. Well, anyway, what I wanted to do was uh, answer some questions. I wanted to, like I said, this is my first Periscope, and uh, you know, I wanted to figure out what the platform's all about, and then also, you know, maybe try and do a Q and A a little bit. Uh, and answer some questions you might have that are related to web development and so forth. So I, if you guys have any sort of live questions, you can go ahead and ask those. Um, I have some questions. I get a lot of questions on YouTube. So I have some questions I was going to go through there also because I believe I can download this and put it on YouTube. So uh, as well as having this on Periscope, I'm also going to try and upload this to YouTube as well because that's where I get most of these questions. So... Uh, anyway, I'll start running through some of the questions that I've got over on YouTube. And again, if you guys have any questions, let me know. And yes, you'll have to excuse my <laughs> appearance this morning. I just got back from running, so I'm probably shining and uh, my hair's a little froish right now. But we'll we'll drive on and, uh, <laughs> and answer some of these questions. All right, so looks like the first one that I got over here. This is on a video about how to create a login system, and in that I talk about, I remember this video, I talk about generating a salt and using that for password hashing. So Andrew Olson asks, how do you generate the salt information used in config.php? Well, so if you're familiar, a lot of times, at least in the past, when you would create some sort of user management system, in the config file, you would need to create a series of different salts that you would then use when hashing passwords. Uh, and so he's asking, how do you generate that salt? Now, the answer to that question is you would have some sort of function or install script that, that you would run. For example, WordPress, they have a very basic five-minute install script. Well, as a part of that script, there's a method in there that actually is going to generate those random strings. So you'd have that as a part of some sort of install script and some sort of random string generator that would actually create those salts in your config file. So that's how you would in the past do that. However, uh, PHP has come out with a new hashing, a series of hashing uh, functions that essentially take all that work out of it. So you don't have to do any of that. They generate the nonces, the salts. They do all the hashing for you. They have functions for checking if the hash is correct uh, and so forth. So uh, you want to use those, the PHP built-in functions that are now there. Um, and the reason that you want to use those is because uh, they are using the most up-to-date hashing algorithms that are out there. So instead of you having to constantly keep up with what's the latest uh, hashing algorithm, what's the best one, should I use bcrypt or SHA-256 or all the crazy things that are out there, you can just select default and PHP as it grows and updates, it's going to uh, select the most up-to-date one. So your code is always up-to-date with the most up-to-date uh, algorithm. Now, that all may sound complicated, and maybe at first it is. However, I created a, a, a tutorial on this exact thing where I actually walk through all of those hashing algorithms, uh, hashing functions, and show you how to use the new ones uh, over on YouTube, uh, youtube.com slash John Morris video. Uh, if you look around on there, you'll see a video that says, it's. I think it says SHA-1, uh, bcrypt or md5 which should you use or something along those lines that one I actually show you how to use those new hashing functions and so forth and so that's what you should be using when you are hashing passwords going forward and I show you how to create it you have to create an update method and so forth I show you how to do all of that so that's what you want to check out for that all right let's look at some more questions here okay so one of the videos I did, again, over on YouTube was a video about preventing uh, cross-site scripting attacks and talk about uh, escaping data, escaping output, right, as you output it to uh, essentially to your H as HTML. 
Um, and so we talked about, that video talks about uh, the difference between HTML entities and, and HTML special characters and, and how they handle things like uh, if you have someone, let's say you have a comment section like a WordPress blog and someone puts JavaScript into that. Well, you want to escape that. So instead of processing the JavaScript and allowing them to do something crazy on your site, uh, it actually escapes it and just displays the JavaScript without actually rendering it and running it. Okay, so uh, Dawn of the Dead 991 asked me, why not use strip tags instead? The problem with strip tags is they're limit legitimate cases where you might want to, where you would want to display that. Uh, that code. So again, someone may be posting JavaScript into your comment section because they want to give a code example, not because they're trying to hack your site or anything. Uh, and so if you use strip tags, it's just going to strip the tags out altogether. And so again, there can be legitimate cases where displaying that code is the right thing to do. So with your application though, you want to look at that and, and look at the places where you're 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 outputting data and identify is this a legitimate case for where someone might you know actually be displaying that code or should I just strip it all together and then make that decision all right got another one about um, they're getting an error with some code and it was a it's a fatal error call to a member function navigation on not an object and so those, I mean, you'd have to look at the specific code, obviously. However, when you get an error that says call to a member function on a non-object, that essentially means you're trying to call a class method and that object uh, or that class hasn't been instantiated uh, or it hasn't been instantiated properly. So there's a number of reasons why that could happen, but what you want to do is you want to go back and look at if that if that class is being instantiated, uh, and if it is, then look at how it is and how it's supposed to be, because there's something going on with the instantiation of that object, most likely. And so, if it's not properly instantiated, and you try to call a function or a method from that particular class, it's not going to work. And a lot of times, this is the arrow you're going to get. So, that's what you'd want to look for. Uh, on that had a couple questions regarding one tutorial video I did where I uh, talk about reCAPTCHA um, I think most of these if you're having this issue the reCAPTCHA has to do with probably in that file I didn't actually put my reCAPTCHA uh, keys so you have to actually go to I still believe it's reCAPTCHA.com and generate your own keys and use those so you need valid keys uh, I think it says format of site key was invalid. I probably put in your site key here or something like that. You need to actually go and generate a recapture key and plug that in to the code where those go. Okay, so that's probably for most of those. Um, let's see what else we got here. More recapture stuff. Oh, here's a good one. I get this one quite a bit. Um, so again, and uh. This is actually a channel comment from <laughs> Mashoud Sheriff Dean. Hopefully that's correct. Um, and it's a fatal error, cannot reassign auto global variable post. So this is essentially comes from old code of mine, which I mean probably five, six years ago and some bad a bad habit that I was in, which was uh, in a function using you know dollar sign underscore score post as the actual variable name and then using that throughout the function uh, for processing post data. Uh, I don't remember exactly what version of PHP it was, but at some point PHP deprecated that because it is a bad habit to do that. Uh, you should either just grab the post data, it's going to be available globally, so you can just grab it that way, or if you're going to pass it into your function, you should give it an actual proper variable name like dollar sign lowercase post or something like that instead of using the actual super global name. So uh, that's where that comes from. Um, I actually answer that one there on the thing, but 
I get a lot of questions about that. So um, let's see what else we got here. All right, looks like a lot of most of these other ones I've answered. So uh, unless anybody has any live questions, I want to try and keep these short. I don't want to be sitting on here for you know, <laughs> hours at a time. But um, do want to answer your questions if you have them. If you have any live questions, you can uh, answer those. If you happen to be watching the replay on Periscope, any of the videos that I mentioned, you can go over to youtube.com slash John Morris video. If you're watching on YouTube and you want to get in touch on Periscope, it's periscope.tv slash JP Morris. Uh, and if you like this Periscope, be sure to heart it up. I guess those are apparently important. So be sure to give me some love. Um, I don't see any questions coming through, so I'll obviously try to promote this Periscope more, but I wanted to get this first one kind of out of the way, uh, see how the platform works, figure out this upside down thing that's kind of tripping me out. Um, so appreciate you guys watching, and I'll talk to you later.